So, Brian, how can my real estate photography business grow and stay on the cutting edge? You need to start using HDPhotoHub.com. All you do is upload your photos and your clients get a property website, social media flyers, and videos all automatically. That sounds pretty good. So how do I get started? Well, it's pretty easy, Rich. All you do is register at HDPhotoHub.com. If you use the referral code Shooting Spaces, you get your first property marketing kit absolutely free. Free? I did say free. Okay. HD Photo Hub is where great photos become a powerful marketing kit. Again, that's HDPhotoHub.com. This is Shooting Spaces with Rich Baum and Brian Berkowitz. Hello, everybody, and hello, Brian. Well, how are you today? I am fantastic, Rich. We're uh, in the middle of the summer. July is here. Getting hot and humid in New York. Mm -hmm. There's no, nothing, like, nothing like New York City in the dead of the summer. We're not, not humid, but we're hot. And it's about 100, and, 100 degrees every day now for the next few months. But wow. it's not too bad. It's not as bad as 100 where you are. So no, no. complaints. No uh, it doesn't hit that high here. Mm -hmm. If it did, it'd be brutal. But uh, yeah. busy? Um, not kind of slowed down. I've, I've just finished eight, eight weekends of weddings in a row, and I'm wow. done with that for another three weeks. But uh, the real estate's kind of slowed down a little bit. Commercial's gone up a little bit. So it's, it's okay. No complaints at all. Sounds good. Um, but let's skip the mindless banter for this week because yeah, we have yeah. so much to talk about with our guests. Um, would you like to introduce him, Rich? Yeah, sure. It's, uh, as as uh, I, I always say, the, I think the most trusted, most trusted man in real estate, <laughs> uh, real estate <laughs> photography, let me say that is. But uh, I'd like to introduce, uh, if you don't know him, he's quite a, quite a nice guy. Very educated, does uh, some wonderful stuff. Very into education, and we uh, we all know him as uh, Wayne Capilli. It's it's Capilli, right? You know, it's Capilli, Capilli. It's okay, Ital it's Italian, and I'm Filipino, so it, I it, it's whatever, whatever, however anybody wants to say it. Oh, great! Well, welcome, Wayne. How are you? I'm doing really well. How about you guys? Uh. Great. Well, it's nice to have you on. I know you were on previously, but I think you were on one of our first episodes ever, probably within the first 10, if I had to guess. And we're, we're slowly approaching 80 now. So it's been a while since we had a chance to chat with you. And now we're doing video. So a lot has changed since uh, your first go around. But thanks for coming back on. Oh, well, thank you. So are we going to try to spend people's money today? Or what do we want to talk about? Well, it's oh. it's really up to it's up to you what you want people to do, Wayne. As as always, because you're like you're like the ultimate influencer. You influenced me. I went to mirrorless and I was shooting. I still shoot crop, a, a Sony A sixty four hundred. I shoot almost uh, seventy five percent of my work with. And, okay, so uh, I'm going. I'm I'm going to try to I'm going to try to get everybody to spend. I think it's twelve dollars to buy two blocks of wax. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, this is this is this is what we use. This is what we use in our workshops. And can can you actually see a difference in the light, the left and right? I can see this? it. Yes. Okay. So I just want to remind everybody: if you're just listening and not watching the video, definitely go to YouTube and <laughs> check out the video so you can see what Wayne is referring to. Yeah. This is this is this is actually two pieces of wax with um, two pieces of aluminum foil between them. The technical term for this is called a differential photometer. If you look at this, it's, I have window light and I have kind of an orange light over here. If you look at my face, my, our, vision, our vision puts the colors together and makes it one color. So, but if you're shooting and you want to see what, you're, what, the, what the light is like, you'll actually see that there's light coming from the side, which is blue, and light coming from this side, and it's kind of an orange. So, as the light changes, and you notice how it's getting darker on one side. You can visually, you can actually visually see um, the color and the what is it? The what is it? There between black and white in, in in photography. It's not dynamic range. It's light ratio. Okay. So you can you can really really see the light ratio very quickly um, when you're shooting and setting lights up. So that's what I mean. So when I set my lights up for for this. I just pretty much used this and went 
I want this to be a little brighter on this side and set the lights and that's how I got my lighting on my face. So sure. Yeah. I mean, on the video, it's, it's hard to tell. Um, but yes. I get the concept and I get the idea. So that's a, it's interesting, but you mentioned that you show, you show this on your workshop. So let's start with that. So I guess okay. it was a, a couple of months ago, you announced that you're doing these workshops with Mike and Scott. Oh, that was, yeah, that was last year, but we're doing another one. We're doing another one in November okay. and, um, they're, they're amazing. It's like, it's like, even if I wasn't teaching in this workshop, I would love to go to this workshop. Um, it came out of a couple of years ago, Scott and I were invited to sh go shoot a house with Scott Basile in, um, in Palm Springs. And, um, it was Scott, Scott and me, and we just did photography for the, for the entire weekend from morning till night. And we didn't actually set up a class, but I learned so much just from shooting and just from, um, the, the, the different ways that Scott, both Scott shot. And, um, we, and we called Mike and we go, you know, this is, this is the way to do a workshop is to be fully immersed in, in, in instead of just classroom shooting a lot. So we get to show, you know, we were under the impression that most of the people that come to the workshops are accomplished photographers and know what they, and know what they're doing. That this is just another way of opening up, um, the different ways just kind of opening their minds of the things that they forgot, if that makes any sense. Sure. Yeah. I and mean, we, we've said many times the best way to learn, or like you said, remember things you forgot is by just watching other people shoot, whether you're shadowing or whatnot. And if that's, I guess the philosophy behind your workshop, there's definitely a positive to that. Well, yeah, uh, it's not even, it's not even, it's not even shadowing us. It really is since, since it's there for three days, um, it really is more, more of the students shooting and we you know we do have classroom and then we're shooting so as they're shooting we go around and help them realize what they're trying to say in the pictures you know it's mm -hmm. like why why is your camera like why is your camera this high or if they're using a tilt shift lens you know kind of suggesting that instead of an up and down you can we're going to do we're going to do a, a, a horizontal shift which a lot of people that have apparently that tilt shift lenses don't use the vertical or the horizontal shifts or vertical shifts on them that mm -hmm. kind of stuff so it's like their vision just another just another way of seeing the same thing that they're shooting and are you doing that workshop uh in it was in kansas city am i correct yes yeah it is in the um the henry block school of management and it's a beautiful, beautiful. school yeah yeah and you know, the also being that they're there shooting <coughs> for three days, you know, um, most of the people that were at our last workshop had pretty much portfolio quality work from, from the workshop. So do you primarily focus on commercial given the fact that this is where you're shooting or you also, you also, you know, dive into residential as well and, and tackle both? Well, that's a, well, that's the thing. It's, it, it is, um, it's it really is lighting composition so um for real estate photographers you know we go break we break out into smaller offices and classrooms and shoot the the adjoining rooms with um you know with with lighting and things like that there's not a house there but there are adjoining rooms and smaller offices that we show how to light and judge again how to how to judge light and use um ambient light to its advantage well and you said you have one coming up in november so yes. if you want to give yourself a plug give yourself and mike and scott a plug for that one by all means you can let some people know about that yes we, it's we are on arc photo workshops we will so i will supply the the link um we do have some openings left and um yeah it's it, I, 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 I truly invite everybody to spend the weekend with Mike and Scott because they're hilarious. They're, they're the most, they're the most fun guys to, to share a house with over, over the weekend. And what is the uh, date of the uh, workshop? Um, October 30th. I am, I will. October. We didn't mean to put pressure on you. Yeah. I, <laughs> 
Perform, Wayne, perform. <laughs> Like over that sounds great. I'd love to go. Maybe Brian and I will go. Go to your should. Um, okay. I definitely November should. November 1st? Mm hmm Yeah, November 1st through the 3rd. Oh, great. Nice. And this is the third go-around you're doing? Is that correct? We did, we, yeah, we did one in Kansas City. We did three in Palm Springs. So, um, oh, so this is the first uh, rendition, fourth rendition of the workshop. Yes. But if I'm not incorrect, if, uh, Palm Springs was one day? Yes. That mm -hmm. one day and um, it was in a house and it was more for real estate photography. And we realized when we did that, when we did the, and it really is, it really is with, with three of us there, it really was a fire hose of information for, for a day. And so when we decided to do pumps, I mean, in Kansas City, we wanted people to be able to shoot more um, to have, because, you know, a lot of times when you do workshops, if it's, even if it's a big house, everybody's in each other's way and there's no, you, there, there's really no opportunity to shoot. Where this is, you know, we spend the first few hours of scouting out the locations, um, helping them, helping them define a shot list and help them, help them finish their shot list by Sunday. So, you know, we give them a, we kind of treat it as a, um, a job that we need two classrooms a hero shot and a dusk and we help them you know plan the shots um and also and also it's one of these things that when we talk about planning shots you know we have to break them of the habit as as they're taking pictures that they need to take it right now we have to remind them you know you're here for three days you know why don't you just wait and see what this what these particular shots look like at different times of the day so you don't have to light it so you know there are different aspects of the lighting and the ambient light that changes in these areas so if you go like if we, you know we're first doing this we're at eight o'clock in the morning and it is definitely going to be different at two so you're going to be here for three days please <laughs> excuse me you know um take the time and and really um see what the your, your scene your shots can look like and you in in and you might look at it and go, oh, it's going to suck. I'm going to look for something else. But you have the time and the luxury to, um, to develop a shot. When are you coming to the East Coast? Um, I don't uh, know. Uh, well, uh, well, you, you guys did such a good sell job of the 100 degrees and 98% humidity. It's kind of like, yeah, I want to be there right now. No, <laughs> but I mean, fall time, <laughs> fall time in New York City is beautiful. Uh, my yeah. last my last workshop was just absolutely perfect. We had a uh, just gorgeous weather, and uh, it was great. And last year, a couple of my workshops were rain, and uh, so it's it's quite the uh, full gamut. But uh, your your workshop sounds really interesting, especially because it's like uh, somewhere to move on from real estate and to to jump to that next level. You know, well, really, it isn't it isn't really level more than it is just to again we're there to. We're there to um, help people appreciate light and controlling it. Mm. And, um, and it, it's like when we did when we did Kansas City. I, I'm probably giving it up, but we got it. Actually, starts at eight o'clock in the morning, so we were actually there at seven thirty. Meet Scott, Scott, and we were there at seven thirty in the morning. And we looked we looked at the looked at the the scene, and it's kind of like screw class. We're not going to teach. Their first lesson is follow the light. The light was perfect right then. And as everybody was coming, it's kind of like, hi, this is, I'm Scott. You know, I'm Scott. I'm Scott, Mike and Wayne. Um, we're going to start taking pictures now because, you know, the, the light is right. You have to take advantage of the light. You cannot waste this light. I'm sure you didn't have any complaints <laughs> from the participants. Well, you know, it, 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 they're, first they have to go, you're the teachers, right? They go, yeah, you know, Scott, Mike, Wayne. <laughs> and then... <laughs> And, and the, 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 the best part for me on um, the workshops was, again, when I was with my, the two Scots in Palm Springs, I learned so much from our, our so-called students. I mean, it's it, the, 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 just how people look at, th look at things differently. I learned a lot. I learned an awful lot for the three days that I was there. That sounds great. And uh, yeah, we'll put the link on our show notes for anybody that might be interested in attending the webinar, uh, the webinar, the, the workshop in November. You said you have a few spots left. Yes. 
But um, let's shift gears for a minute because I just found out today, and when this podcast is released, I guess it might be old news, but um, that you're officially on the bill as a speaker for the upcoming PFRE conference. So that's pretty exciting stuff. I'm thrilled. Um, you know, I'm going to be talking on, on light farming, so using multiple strobes through, through different scenes and being able to set your lights up so your lights and your light setups will yield more than just the one picture that you're, that you're taking. You know, once, once the lights are set up in far rooms and things like that, those, you don't have to worry about those lights. You can actually change angles and use the light that's there without, without moving those and minimally moving the lights that are around you. But yeah, you can, you can get five, six images out of one light setup and then go on to the next thing. Yeah, I've been using your technique for quite a while, and I, it'll be interesting for me to see if I'm doing it correctly, but I get the general gist where it's uh, just being more economical and, and with, your, um, with your lighting and your time and, and just moving in one direction. And yes. uh, it's, it's really, really helpful. It really has helped me a lot, keeping the thing, opening up your thinking to more than what you're just doing right this second. And then mm -hmm. and looking at the overall picture, I can see it being like a win-win. So really yeah, good. and even if and even if you just thought about how you know, even if you just thought about what your next pictures are, anyways, without using light forming, it's, you, that's just a better economy of time as opposed to, you know, as, as opposed to making setting up each picture, every single room. And it's kind of like no, you can. There's there's a lot of carry through from one room to the other. If you plan it right. So you, Mike, and Scott are all going to be uh, speaking there again. It's like a little. Uh little mini reunion over there yes we are, by the end of by the end of november we'll be sick of each other um yeah but well, well, last time what happened was um we as we as we were leaving um we, we packed the car and we got to the airport and um they we took all we took everything off and was, as i looked at the camera all the camera equipment i realized that i left my my camera bag um, in the house, which is 45 minutes away from the airport. I didn't because, but they're, they're both looking at me like, you got to be kidding me. You know, well, you know, you're going to, we'll, we'll see you later. But <laughs> no, I, I, but no, but like I said, they had, they had my back and Mike, Mike, Mike with the calm head goes, look, there is no way that we left your camera equipment there. So we went through the bags and you know, the, yeah, my, my camera equipment was there, but drama and you know, but you get to do it again together in Vegas. So who knows what'll go, what'll go down over there. Yeah. So what are, what are your thoughts overall, Wayne, on this, uh, the, I guess the inaugural PFRE conference? I, I, I like it. I, I, you know, I, I wanted to, I wanted to be a part of it because again, from the workshops, I, I really enjoyed meeting other photographers. Um, and again, um, just the 24 people and the, all the people actually that I met in the workshop, I learned so much from them that um, I'm excited to meet a lot of people at the convention. You know, like-minded, like-minded people with the same goal. You know, it's it's great. I'm with you. I uh, over the last I guess 18 months, I had probably about a hundred attendees in my workshops, and it's been. I have friends that I am still in touch with, people that are just great people and that we've we've known might have known a little bit before from the groups, but you get to spend two days or three days with people and, and it's really a tremendous opportunity. So I'm super excited about going to the um, the conference and just get to to hang out and, and have fun. And the best part for me is though we might be doing a little bit of um, interviews, podcasting, um, Brian and I. Um, it will be really something that we get to come and enjoy. So I'm looking forward to seeing everything everybody's got. Yeah, and so the the, the hint the, the hint for everybody when you when you're actually meeting another photographer, um, don't ask the camera, don't ask the f stop, don't ask the shutter speed, don't ask the ISO. So ask for, ask more meaningful questions when you when you when you finally when you finally get to a photographer that you haven't met in a long time. Because you know, in all honesty, it's going to be um, F8, ISO 250, um, the widest lens I had on the camera, and a camera. So, you know, 
get those four questions out of the way and just go, go for the question that you really want to ask the person. What's the meaning of life, Wayne? That's what I want to ask. Uh, 42. It's 42. 42. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not the answer I was expecting, but I'll, I'll think about it. Hitchhiker's guide, to, Hitchhiker's guide to the Galaxy. Uh. <laughs> I, I totally forgot. Oh, my God. Uh, what a great book. That's no, great. In, all, in all seriousness, I think, it, like you said, it, it's just great for networking and it's just to be able to meet so many people that we come across um, daily, you know, in our social circles online that, you know, we've never met, to, never had a chance to meet face to face, you know, the two of you, for instance, it, it'll be good to just get everyone in a room and just talk shop and hang out and have fun, learn from each other and, you know, drink a little at night. So, And that's, and that's what I mean. Isn't, isn't, isn't that the thing though? At the party, it's kind of like, Yes, there's all these people that you want to meet, but I want to see what that person's like drunk. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rich, I interrupted you. You about to say something. No, I didn't say anything. No, uh -huh. I guess I, uh, I just uh, want to try and get out alive. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh -oh. that's all I want to do. And uh, no compromising photos. You know. If that's the way you party, Rich, I'm going to hang out with you. <laughs> Might have to be, might have to be. Okay, that's great. So, so Wayne, you were, um, we were discussing what we we're going to talk about today. And uh, one of the things is you wanted to uh, just talk about a few little cool gadgets. And you had one I really liked. I looked it up on the uh, app store. And why don't you uh, tell us about the, uh, oh, no, no, the app you, have, you, were... you have, you have the floor, please, because it's, it's part of the conversation that you've been doing. So please let, let them know about the, the app. Well, okay, because I don't want to misrepresent it because I don't really know much about it. But what did it seem like? And this is a really good topic, too, I wanted to bring up because so much of what I've been thinking about, and actually I've been thinking about it for months, and I've actually think I talked to you uh, or, or conversed with you online about uh, talking about composition. And since then, we have had um, Tony uh, coming on and talking about uh, composition and his uh, his um, tutorial, but we're also going to be having a webinar, and the webinar is going to be a photo critique and mainly um, uh, focused on composition. And it's something that I know for a fact when I'm doing my workshops, it's more for very basic, rudimentary people getting into this, learning how their cameras work and with their triggers and how to make the lights work and stuff like that. But I don't really go into advanced or, or really a lot of thought into the composition. I do a lot of the basics because I don't want to overwhelm people. But Tony's really got me into doing these, these thinking about the ratios and the rule of thirds and all the really interesting thing that it's like the psychology behind um, composition, why a picture strikes you and such. But um, you showed you you told me about this little app for the phone, and I God I, I don't know if I can even uh, well I won't even ask you you can say the name of it, but it it was really cool because the first thing I saw when I went on the app store was it's got these diagrams on your phone it's laid out so you have like this grid grid of of there it is what's the, what's the app called it's called wise camera wise camera it's hard to see uh angle it you've got uh, you've got a ring light there don't you yes oh that's how come you look so pretty <laughs> man <laughs> go ahead try that again oh no i see i see it now that's pretty cool okay uh say something i, I want the camera to go to you wayne okay so um the wise wise camera puts puts the pattern on your iphone so you can so you can select you know the different kind of grids to see what your composition's like and this whole this whole thing with um with composition and i i've put i put you know the diagrams on and people go well i just do what i do what i do and absolutely that's that that's really the way that you should go but what happens is if you just took these little these little grids in Photoshop or the other, there's also another app called um, Wise Photo. And if you just if you took your basic um, composition and just put it up and put and put it put it on a grid and kind of understood like in rule of thirds, like the most important thing would be in the point, and you you will realize that intuitively. You've already been doing this all along. 
And mm -hmm. so all you have to do, and really all you need to do is just, just kind of tweak it a little bit inside, inside Photoshop and everything where it's on the grid and it will look different. It'll be the same picture that you had, but just putting it within that structure, it's kind of like, huh, that, that looks, that looks better. It, it looks more restful. It's still the same picture and it's still your same composition. And, and so if you go rule of thirds and then switch over to like one of the other, just another one of the, one of the other um, things. <laughs> um, and if you, and if you move the thing to what that guide is, you will notice that the picture feels different. It looks different. It, 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 it evokes a different mood. And what happens there is, again, from, from just the basic way that you original, that you originally did it gives you just this, it gives you options on how you, you know, do things. So it's like, um, it's like the one point. But what we've been, we've, been, we've been teaching is, you know, everybody, we, we all do the door straight in the middle. And so let's say that we're doing a front door of the house. And sometimes there is there's a um, garage next door to the, to the front mm -hmm. door. And that really actually is very uninteresting. So if you just took that same, that took that same view and propped it so it's the side, the door and the window off to the side, you know, it's still a one point. You've taken out, you've taken out the, the garage and you've actually just give us, given the, the viewer the front door all the way through the house and part of the front of the house. Again, same, it is the same um, composition. Just part of it is now helping your idea of what you want to show solidify. And that's where your horizontal shift comes in because you can that's just keep your camera in the same place and just right. shift the lens over. It really shift great. The lens over. But I love the idea of the templates because you can start to visually see what start seeing it. And, 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 and you're right. I, I've talked to several people that said that they were surprised to find out that they're doing these things normally in your mind because we're absolutely like photographers. You see what just seems to work best and hits you on an emotional basis. But this is certainly something that I'm going to get. And the best part about it is how much is it, Wayne? I don't know. <laughs> it's under $4. Three ninety nine, I think, and I'm going to go order it right when I get off the uh, off the yes, podcast. And, and, and it and it does work. It does work with your phone, and it works with your iPad and all those other kind of things. There's mm -hmm. also there's also another um, another app called Waze Photo, which will put the, the grids on your pictures um, that's in your iPhone library. So if you want to play with the, the pictures that you've already taken. Well, let me ask you two questions too. on that app. First of all, do you know when you're looking through the camera, what do you know what the lens equivalent is that you're no, looking no, through? No, it's just it's just your it's just it's just your iPhone. Oh, so I I've heard that that's around a 24 give or take, but I don't know for sure. Yeah. Um. Then if you take pictures with that app, um, will those overlays be on your pictures? Yes, it will. It will save the overlay and the original pictures because you know I'm, I'm sure people are going to buy this app going. I don't want the lines on it. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, yeah. what I'm thinking, well, my thought process is if I go on a scout and want to use my iPhone for scouting, mm -hmm. and when I go on a scout, um, a lot of times I'll send my pictures to the client and say, you know, this is what I came up with on the scout. Tell me what you like. So when we go to the shoot, we can go with those. And if I'm mm -hmm. able to compose with, you know, let's say a rule of thirds or, you know, a golden spiral overlay over there, compose, mm -hmm. but then so my compositions look, you know, pretty good on my phone and then send them off to them yeah. without the overlays. Um, yeah. That'll go a long way as far as even just having my iPhone scout pictures look better. Yeah. Oh, no, absolutely. They, they, they will do it both. They'll do both. Sure. You know, one thing I wanted to add, you were talking about um, using those overlays in Photoshop. Um, I don't know how many people use this. I know I use this daily and I would guess you guys do too. But when you're using the crop feature, you do have the option of putting those overlays on your crop tool. Absolutely. Um, I, don't know, I have my rule of thirds overlay on all the time on my crop tool without fail. And then if I need to go with one of the different overlays, it's just a click of a button to change it. But if, you, if, or if, you, if people out there are using your crop tool without any of these overlays, I at least put the rule of thirds one on because I guess that's the most common used um, rule, if you want to call it that. Um, at least that, and then change it as needed because it'll definitely help when you're cropping. And well, it's super. Actually, so go ahead, ahead Win. 
the other the other guide that people really should use is the um, the center. <laughs> There, there is actually one of the grids that actually is that'll put a line in the dead center of of the picture, and it's like, okay, you can, people don't use rule of thirds, and they kind of put it in the center, but it's really not. So, <laughs> so you, at least there's a line that if you want to, if you want to put something in the center, which we don't suggest, that you know, put it in the center because anything left or right of that just you know just makes us uncomfortable. So. Yeah. And super important that uh, anybody out there that's listening, especially people that are getting into this and new to photography or new to this type of photography, um, always have, I can't imagine shooting without a grid. And my grid is always um, the checkerboard, which is um, tic-tac-toe, which is rule of thirds. And it's just something that helps you just always be able to have it in your mind and keep keep it in your mind so it's it's super super important and if you're not if you're not using it uh if you don't have the grid lines turned on in your camera turn them on and try them and see if you like it but i guarantee you it'll be there probably for the rest of your life because i just can't shoot without it yeah you know it's funny i'm looking now and i must have downloaded this once upon a time because i have this app on my phone <laughs> and i never knew it so um i must have came across it sometime along the line, maybe even by you. I couldn't even tell you um, how I found it and I must have paid for it, but I need to start using it more. Yeah. Now that I know it, that it's sitting on my phone already paid for, I should probably start using it. Yes. You were such a YouTube in influencer. I mean, a, a Facebook influencer there, Wayne. <laughs> Cutting edge Wayne. Yeah. Exactly. Beautiful. Beautiful. Great. Um, so, what else do you, we, we were so many things we could talk about and uh, we're doing pretty good on time right now. What else did you want to talk about? I know that you, uh, you were mentioning something about doing uh, editing on your iPad or, or anything else you want to talk about. Um, yeah, you know, this, the, there's, there's the thing with the dark windows. And, uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about that. Okay, absolutely. Let's go. Let's go back to this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is so. What happens? Can we reference is, what we're uh, reference what we're talking about, though, for the people out there? That no, not that. Um, the the dark mode, the uh, or dark dark, uh, dark, dark windows. Dark, dark, uh, dark reference windows. Who, where that came up. Um, it's just uh, it's just part of the thing that you know. It was a Gary that said that windows are too dark and that you know that people should put the brakes on and all this other kind of stuff sure. you know, and a lot of and a lot of um a lot of photographers are saying this is what our clients want um, yeah and we actually is, had gary on a couple of weeks ago i don't know if you heard it to yes. uh, talk about it yeah yeah and and you know it it is true that what happens is one of this is this is this is a kind of a warning <laughs> about about super clear windows um super clear windows normally means also very very sterile insides and it was it really is the hallmark of your work being sent out to, to post processors and um you know so everything everything is um kind of devoid of color i mean there's it's it's clean but it's it the colors are kind of um compressed and it's the 100 percent window pull um and, and that's what that's what that's what this comes in mind so what happens is if this, if your window, see this lets us know where the light source is mm -hmm. and the lighting source is the window. If we put this in a room, the, 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 the wax will tell us that, that the light is coming from the window. And if we used flash to fill it, you know, from, from camera position, if the flash, if this, if this area here, which is your fill, becomes equal or brighter than this, then what happens is um, that becomes the main light. That's that's where the our our minds are referencing, saying, "Oh, that's where the light's coming from." There must be a big window behind that person that instead of the window. So you know, unconsciously they will say, "Okay, so there's a window behind that person, that behind Wayne." But the far windows on the other side, um, they don't have to be that bright because the the main light source is behind behind the person if it's real if it isn't then you know that's why your pictures look flashy so from that if you, if windows psychologically we know that the brightest part of the room would be either lights or the window and if 
if the windows are too dark, um, unconsciously, we just know that um, that room shouldn't look like that. So it, it is something that it's a style thing that people choose, but um, people, people unconsciously know that that's not the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, and I've said this when we spoke to Gary, um, you know, if that window is too dark, it just doesn't look natural. Um, it doesn't look there, there's, like you said, there's something uncomfortable about it and you might not realize what it is, but you're looking at it and you're just like, something doesn't sit right here where you know that it would naturally look a little bit brighter and look, you know, to play both sides, I understand where people are coming from. That's what the client wants. So that's what I'm going to deliver. And there's, you know, there's a lot of sides to that argument, which I would agree and disagree with, but um yeah I, I agree with you wholeheartedly if if a window is too dark it's going to make somebody feel uncomfortable <clears throat> well also also um it, it, it seems it, it seems that the the level of a proficient real estate photo is a window pole that really that you know that that actually has become part of the thing if if a picture is successful it's oh yeah you got a good window pole like what about the rest of the room? I mean, we can't see the, the you know the, the table and things like that. So yeah, no, it's yeah. weird because I've posted pictures that I've shot, and that that has been some of the comments. Great window pole, and I'm like, that wasn't what I was going for here. <laughs> um, yes. you know, if you're telling me that there's a great window pole, that means my window pole is too dark. Yeah, um, because you know I shouldn't. I, you shouldn't be able to notice. It shouldn't. It shouldn't catch your eye. If it catches your eye, that means it's too dark. Well, that's what it means. So from that. Um, that has become the norm and the standard of what a um, of a good real estate photo is. You know, that, oh, good window pole. Like, and and you know. so something I, I want to say is um, I got the whole window pull from um, Peter Lyons, mm -hmm. and Peter said he got it from you, and I don't know where you got it from or if you invented it. Did you invent it, by the way? No, I, I, I was dark and mode, dark and mode, dark, dark and mode. No, that, that, that okay. is, that is, yeah, it is just something that I, I, by the way, there is, there is a part two to dark and mode. So, you know, you're opening up a can of worms. <laughs> oh <here>. yeah. <laughs> but I just want to say that something I think that got left out in the whole discussion is, and it seems to have, I try to be correcting it, uh, but maybe I spent a little more time on it. Maybe at the work at the uh, conference, I'll talk more about it. But um, I think that people are losing the idea that a window pull, to me, doing an actual window shot where you're taking a picture for the exposure of the window alone and either doing darken mode or whatever you want to do, pasting it in or whatever, is not the goal of a picture. The goal of a picture is to expose for the brightest thing in the room. I learned that from Scott, what it is, whether it's the light or whether it's the window. And if you can't get that desired look, then you go do it. But the idea is not to do a window pull. And I always do my window pull last in case I, don't, I normally don't need a window pull. So mm -hmm. the whole idea is not to do, not to have it in your repertoire for every shot. A lot of people, I think, are doing it and they're, they're tr going for a window pull. They're doing a darkened mode window pull in every shot that they have a window in. And that just isn't necessary. I, I, I mean, I might only do two or three max on any house uh, darken mode because I can just capture it in one single exposure. So it's just something that I think has gone off in its own trajectory, trajectory but it, it really shouldn't. And I really, really, uh, at first I didn't know how to take what Gary was talking about, um, but now I totally agree with him. I like the psychology behind the, um, you know, what your brain thinks is right, I think is very pertinent and very real. And I'm really glad the dialogue was opened up and we were able to continue the dialogue on our podcast. So I think it needs to be uh, more people talk about it and, and really find your stride because maybe it's just gone to one extreme and it's going to come back down and everybody will be better off for it six months or, or whenever. So it's a yeah. tremendous tool, though. It's when Peter told me about it, I was driving and he told me the concept. And I literally had to pull over and I said, Peter, this is, this is going to save me hours and hours and hours. So it was wonderful. I, I just got to tell you, it was probably the best trick I was ever taught in photography. So I well, love it. Yeah, I, I, was, I, was, I went to a shoot with, with Peter and he was doing what he was doing. And I was going, why are you, why are you doing that? <laughs> I don't, 
And he goes, well, you know, I, I, I have to get the windows. And I go, you, you try this. And then so, yeah. And that's, and, and I, I wish I, at the time, at the time I, I, I had to describe it to him and call, but um, back to today, I wish that I had my iPad then that I could show them that I could actually just do the, the, the post there. So, mm -hmm. I, so are you doing a lot of your posts on location now with the iPad? No, <laughs> but I, are you, are you I doing can. a lot of your posts with your iPad. Yes. Yeah. And you know, I'm learning, I'm learning video and, um, I, I, I bought LumaFusion and, um, I, I, and I, and then I try to do video editing on my, on, on my power max and all those other kind of things. And using, using a desktop computer sucks compared to using an um, iPad pro, you know, I'm, I, I and I, it's one of those things that I imported, I imported my video into my iPad and it was two 4k streams with sound and it's, it scrubbed like, like, you know, like, like, like I could see it. Um, they came together. Um, once I started doing the, the transitions, I could actually scrub through and see the transitions like, almost in real time. Fine. So I do this. I try to do this on the computer. Well, the computer has to ingest it, in the little, and then doing it in Final Cut Pro or the the other Adobe products, kind of like no, you know, working with proxies and into it didn't scrub as fast, and you know, to to play it, it just took so much more time. So. Um, as far as vid edit editing video, I mean, I mean, we're talking just short clips. Um, iPad Pro and LumaFusion is the way. Now, do you have to have a souped up iPad? Um, I happen to have souped up iPads, but um, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I I can't. I can't. I can't. Because, um, like I said, I have I have the, the twelve inch and I have the ten inch. They're both iPad Pros, so. I don't know if you can do it on, on a smaller one. Are you are you able to choose more RAM in an iPad, or is it just a standard amount? It just it is just standard, and that what that's, is it? that's that's what I mean. Even even it has it it only can the, the biggest iPad Pro only has four to six gigs of RAM as opposed to loading up with thirty two gigs on a, on a computer. Um, it, it's just don't know why, but it's just it's just faster. It's mm -hmm. it, it's not just not just faster it's a way faster it'd be the actual um using it in previewing it and just doing the things back and forth it's it, it's like when i, well, I really i try and i go i i did it because i was i was watching tv trying playing with video like, okay i need to get serious with this put it on the computer at work and i'm like this sucks <laughs> so yeah no it's interesting but i think Honestly, at the end of the day, I think it's just kind of how you learn and what you're used to. You know, I mm -hmm. edit on Final Cut Pro, um, and I ha was editing on Premiere before I switched to Final Cut Pro. But I sw I did make the switch years ago um, when X first came out, and I wouldn't even I can't even imagine editing on my iPad just because when I edit in Final Cut Pro, a lot of the stuff I go to isn't just basic. You know, chop a clip here, chop a clip here put a music on and you're good to go. You know, uh, you know, whether it's graphics and, you know, more advanced audio editing and color correction and stuff like that. Like it just, it's a lot easier for me to just have more space. I have two monitors. I have all my clips on one monitor and my timeline on another. And it just, everything is just so spread out that it's just easier to work that way. No, absolutely. I, it's, that's, yeah, I can see the limitation. I absolutely can see the limitations, but like I said, it just, just, just on the simple scrubbing and previewing, I don't know what the hell is going on, but it is it is much faster than I got. You know, I, I would take the convenience of being able to to do a transition, do titling, do color correction, and have it done almost immediately. And even oh, the render on it is almost one to one. So you know that that kind of blew my mind. Oh, cool. So multi track four K um, thing. It's just a five minute movie, but it took four and a half minutes to render four K well four K video. Sweet, no, and that's that's great. I mean, one of the big features for me that I love about Final Cut is that it has background rendering, so mm -hmm. it's always rendering at the time at the you know. So if if I get caught up in a call, by the time I, I get off the call, it's it's rendered. Or if mm -hmm. I get distracted for a minute on an email, I come back to my to Final Cut and everything's rendered already. So yeah, 
Um, it's pretty neat, but um, we get into a whole different topic on video editing now. And Rich probably <laughs> is like, well, how'd we get here? <laughs> oh, I'd, like to, I'd like to know more about editing. I just, I'm, I'm not into it. Well, that's okay. That's, that's, video. That, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's why, that's why I, that's why I love the iPad. It's like, I'm not going to do any video. I, I might actually, because of, because of that, I probably will do more video editing, but um, something to, for something to just try immediately to do. Um, yeah, I, I first just, like I said, just first started putting some clips, clips together and got to play with it and um, got to do it while I was watching TV. Um, so yeah, that's, that is a, that is a nice workflow. And especially, um, iPad and Lightroom. Um, Lightroom CC is is faster than Lightroom, um, the regular Lightroom on on a computer. It doesn't Classic. do as much, but it yeah, but it is faster. But one of the things that I'm sure that the new Lightroom will do that, but a lot of the heavy lifting of color correcting and um, a lot of the post processing is going to be is, is being done by the Adobe servers. So if the, 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 that color correcting all of their stuff is very, very fast on an, on an iPad, not because the iPad is fast. It's because a lot of the, um, a lot of the processing is done online with Adobe. Yeah, that's interesting. I never really used, um, Lightroom CC, but I've he been hearing good things. So, I mean, I'm sure it's inevitable that the shift is going to come and I'm going to be <clears throat> processing everything through Lightroom CC, but I just haven't done it yet. No, it, you know, no, it, it really, you're, you're not, because if you, it, what happens is the way Lightroom is with most people, everybody that uses Lightroom on a computer has their, their file system and folders and those other kind of things. But, um, Lightroom CC, like in my case, I, I will ingest a shoot, put it into Lightroom CC. Lightroom CC will put all the files, if you have a Wi Fi connection, will put all the files online. And we'll, we'll sync to your computer at home, so your files are now in, on your on your um, cloud storage and on your hard drive. And then after it's ingested, um, they 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 delete the um, the original raw files from your iPad, leaving smart previews. Mm -hmm. So, and is there any latency when you're editing, since everything is technically in the cloud? Um, that's what I mean. So. In in Lightroom, since you're working um, with smart smart previews, previews and doing everything, about it, it is it is it is instantaneous. I cannot I cannot wait till the new Photoshop for the iPad comes out because it's going to it's going to be the same technology. So all your changes are essentially happening on smart previews. So I would gather then when you're finally exporting your images, that takes a little longer because it's downloading the images from the cloud, putting on your corrections, and then make it, saving a final. Yes. Oh, but that's fine. That's okay if it takes a little longer because at that time your job is done. You can yes. just let it run and do its thing. So interesting, interesting way of uh, doing things, an interesting workflow and something I definitely want to look into um, down the line for the future. So show us your camera. Yeah, you've been telling me. I have two cameras now. As people have heard, I went uh, digital. I have the R. No, 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 no. You, you went, you went, you went, went mirrorless. mirrorless. <laughs> Yeah, I went digital. I don't, I don't really film anymore. <laughs> yes, Wayne asked me to take my camera out prior, but I have I have both. I have the R and the RP, which is my backup, and then I have the R with the battery grip, which is why it looks so big, and the really right stuff um, L bracket on there. Cool wow. thing about this bracket is that I can take out the batteries and not have to take the bracket off. So it's pretty neat, but I uh, I'm loving it so far. So what made you decide that what made you decide to switch um, to mirrorless? Um, well, first off, I, I thought the switch was inevitable. You know, I knew that probably that's the way we're going to go eventually. Um, so there were a couple of things. Um, I rented it first. I wanted to try it out. Well, I tried it out last year in last October at Photo Plus, which is at Javits here in New York. Um, they had a big display, obviously showing off. It was just when it was announced, and I played with it. I liked it there. Um, but didn't really think about it at the time. Then a couple, about a month and a half, two months ago, I got a loaner from Canon for 10 days. So Canon sent it to me to try out. And I took it on a couple of shoots. And the biggest game changer for me was just the EVF. And it's sad to say, I don't know how I didn't 
you know, I used live view occasionally, but it's not the same. Yeah. I don't know how I lived without it for so long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, really that, that's what I mean. People, people said, oh, so, you switched, so you switched to Sony. I went, no, I didn't switch to Sony. I switched to, uh, to an EPF. Yeah, like no, just, that was that, that. And I think focus speaking for me is very big, which I started using now all the time. Um, and you just taught me before we went on the air, a new focusing trick that I got to try. But um, those were the biggest factors for me. And, you know, as I was saying to you earlier, between the stuff I sold, it really, the whole thing cost me under 150 bucks out of pocket to sell my two bodies and my lens and buy my two new bodies and the new RF Canon lens. It really didn't cost me a lot out of packet, pocket. So I was still able Did to get, get a 24105. That's what I got. Yeah. I sold my 24 to 70 to eight, my old Canon EF, and I bought the new RF 24105. Is it really, is it really as sharp as they say it is? It's pretty damn sharp. <laughs> I, can t- I can send you some images later. Um, but also they, they have that, all the new Canon lenses have that control ring on it, which is really cool. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Um, mm-hmm. It's an extra ring. You have your regular focal ring, your um, focus ring, and then you have a new control ring, which you can set in camera to control whatever you want. Wow. So I actually have it set to control my ISO. So when I'm holding the camera, do you, change your, do you change your ISO that often that you need to put it onto a control ring? No, but when I do, it's good to have it there quicker than have <laughs> to go to the settings. You know, no, but when, you know, well, first of all, every so often I shoot events. Um, so when I do shoot those, it's good to have the ISO at, at your fingertip. But, you know, when you're holding your camera, let's say handheld at an event or something like that, um, or even on a tripod, with my right hand, I have my shutter speed and exposure with my two fingers, and I have the ISO at the front of the lens. I can literally control anything I have to control in a matter of literally a second or two. Um, but if you don't want to use it for ISO, you can control a handful of other things. You set it in camera to whatever you want it to control. So, you know, you can control exposure if you want, shutter speed, whatever works for you. That's cool. Or you, or you can just disable it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also the adapter that I got to put my old EF lenses on it has the control ring on the adapter. So I can even use my tilt shift lenses, for instance, with the control ring on the adapter. So it's pretty neat. Cool. Pretty cool. Okay, stuff. Rich, what are you, what are you using? What do you, you bought an A7 III? I got two A7 III's because I got to have two identical bodies for weddings and such and backup. And then uh, I've got the... Uh, I. I sold my six A six thousand for the sixty four hundred, and I'm oh, do you like super it? happy. I love it. It's great. Yeah, and the uh, I am so pleased with. I have got not quite everything Sony makes glass wise, but I'm pretty close. And I'm not uh, not up to the four hundred yet, but uh, part of me is thinking of getting that four hundred two point eight. They wow. have out now the. I can, believe it or not, I could use a 400 2.8 uh, shooting sports, but um, I certainly, you're looking at me. <laughs> you, you wouldn't want a 200, a 400 2.8? I, I would, I would love a 400 2.8. Yeah. I, would, I would not know what to do with it, but. Oh, yeah. okay. Now I, I certainly could use it a lot for my sports photography, but I'm so happy. And can it is an extender or are you going to lose too much stop? Too much it's stop not there? the same. You, you could, you could. Um, but it's just, uh, there's something about a 402.8 constant. It's just pretty cool. But, um, I am very happy and there's very extremely sharp glass. It's almost too sharp. I get a little, get a little too much of the, uh, complexion of the, ma- of the brides and, uh, yeah, it's literally, uh, it's shockingly sharp, but I'm very happy. I shot a wedding again yesterday and, and just, uh, absolutely, uh, have been enjoying my transition to Sony. So a uh, little bit of learning curve, but, uh, and I owe it all to you. I think any of my um, happiness or any of my frustrations, <laughs> I owe all to you, Wayne. And I think of you constantly when I'm like, God, this menu system is driving me crazy. But so, it is, it's, it, it's a wonderful system. And I tell people now, if you're Nikon or Canon, I say, you know, when, when the Canon just came out and Nikon just came out they were met with less than stellar they, they missed a few things a few boats dual card slots things like that but um i give it time and they'll have their act together and and i think it's uh, just stay with the brand that you're you're with i don't think it's it needs to be sony if you're happy with canon stay with canon and uh everybody i've heard from uh, is liking their their canon mirrorless nikon yeah. too i played with the nikon 
love it. And uh, yeah, but uh, for me, I just had to leave. I had to leave Nikon. We weren't happy. So anyway, yeah. another story. But I think we got to wrap it up there, Wayne. And okay. uh, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to come on. I'm really excited to um, see you in, in November in Las Vegas, as with everybody. Got some really exciting things coming up regarding the, the conference. And yeah, if, uh, if anyone hasn't yet registered photography for real estate.net, you can go there and click on it and you can go register there. It's going to mm -hmm. be a fun time. And if you don't go, you probably will regret it when you see everyone's pictures and everything else there. So uh, you don't want to miss it. Only get, it also, because everybody's going to be talking about it until the end of the year. Or so you should not, you should not, not be there. And, and we'll be doing some podcasts there to make you feel really bad about not being there. Because <laughs> we'll try our best to make you think that you couldn't be there. You missed it. I hate missing those parties. But it's going to be really fun. And uh, we've got our own webinar coming up, right, Brian? Yep, July 18th. Um, we're not even sure of this exact date of the release of this one with you, Wayne, but I think it's going to be before July 18th. So um, okay. if Thank it God. is, definitely, uh, <laughs> yeah, if it is, definitely go and sign up for the webinar shooting spaces.net slash composition. And you can come. We're doing a photo critique with. Tony Colangelo, you can go, you can, after you register, you can go submit your images to us. The link is on the registration page and um, we're going to pick a, a good handful of images and, uh, you know, Tony's going to go over the good, the bad, the ugly with your images and let us uh, know if they're great or how you can fix them. Wayne, so I hope you'll send us one of your pictures. Are, are you guys going to put pictures in? Yes, 100%. Oh, yeah. We will definitely have pictures in there. I'm not thrilled, but I will do it. <laughs> That's great. And uh, Wayne, also for people who might be interested in attending your November um, conference uh, uh, workshop, if you want to call it that, what, um, what's the website one more time? Arc Photo Workshops. And I will, send, I will supply the link to you. Yeah, we'll put it in the show notes. So anyone that wants to find out some more info can, um, I guess, go in there and get as much info as they need. And I'm sure um, there's an email address there. If they have any questions, they can just shoot you guys an email or someone will get back to them. Yep. All right, cool. Well, thank you for coming on a second time around, Wayne. I'm sure we'll probably this is the speak third, to you. Third. This is the third? This is the third. Really? Oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, my mind is shot. I didn't even realize that. Good. All right. So thank you for coming it's on. A, it for it's the third it's okay. Time. That, you know, the, the amount of money that you guys are paying me to be on here, I'm, I'm going to go to Jenner, <laughs> buy a camera. <laughs> well, this is the first time we get to see your face when we talk to you. So it's a whole different uh, ball game. Great. Um, but thank you for coming on. And I know me personally, I'm looking forward to meeting you out in uh, November in Vegas. I'm sure Rich is as well. I think you guys, have you guys actually ever met or not? Yes, we have. We've had lunch. Yeah. All right, good. So uh, rekindle your relationship out in Vegas. <laughs> great. Yeah. Looking and, forward to meeting uh, you guys. Yeah, good, great time. Thank you so much, Wayne. And uh, everybody, be sure to uh, subscribe to our podcast. Subscribe at shootingspacespodcast.com. And we've got our blog page at shootingspaces.net. And uh, the webinar and all the really fun stuff coming up. It's uh, going to be a, a really nice uh, end of the year. And uh, all a prelude to the, uh, the conference. So really excited about it. Excited. Great. All right. So, yeah. And whatever, whatever you do, just be shooting better, smarter, and uh, just get out there and shoot some spaces. This episode of Shooting Spaces has been brought to you by HDPhotoHub.com helping your real estate photography business grow and stay on the cutting edge. Just upload your photos and your clients get a property website, social media flyers, and videos all automatically. Register today at hdphotohub.com using referral code SHOOTINGSPACES to get your first property marketing kit absolutely free. HD Photo Hub is where great photos become a powerful marketing kit. Again, that's hdphotohub.com. This has been Shooting Spaces. For more episodes, visit shootingspacespodcast.com and visit our education site at shootingspaces.net.